I'm Lee Spencer with the Racing Boys and caught up with Corey LaJoy at Talladega. And Corey, it, it's kind of hard to believe that this is your first full year in the Cup Series. I mean, you've, you're have you like a journeyman racer. You've been around forever, but first time that you're going to run the full season with one team and all 36 races. What's it been like to finally be able to be in a, with a team where you can develop some consistency? Uh, yeah, it's been great. Uh, you know, we're just trying to uh, put the, put together a couple solid runs. We've had the good good speed in our car so far this year. Uh, but to be with the same group of guys every week, uh, and, you know, and, and to work on communication with myself and Randy, I feel like we're both on the same page at this part of the year. We've learned each other, and we worked with each other at BK, but I was in the car and out of the car quite frequently. Uh, so to, to be able to work, you know, every weekend together and, and to learn each other's terminology and how, you know, how we dissect things has is, is been pretty fun. Randy is also a guy who comes from the School of Hard Knocks, and he's been all over the place, great teams, you know, middle-of-the-road teams. He's just been through it all. Does that – kind of help build the camaraderie you need to be feel like you're on the same page yeah I, I feel like you know we've talked about it before where we feel like his career in the garage is similar to mine as a driver just you know you, you've had the opportunities with the big teams growing up and and he knows what the you know what kind of tools those guys are racing with and knows how to use them if he if he actually had them in his toolbox and you know he's been kind of pushed pushed down and out and uh you know when you kind of found a, a good home and a good fit here with with go fast is, and so that's kind of the way my career's been too you know I, I was winning races when I was a couple years younger and, and I had a lot of good hype going and then uh, I kind of got pushed out and, and to the side as well with not a whole lot of good opportunities so I'm trying to slowly claw my way back up and uh, I'm, glad, I'm glad he's definitely I'm definitely definitely glad he's with me because it uh He's one of the he's one of the many positives over at GoFast. Your team owner Archie, he's here for the love of the sport. He's here for all the right reasons. Uh, you've been able to pick up some sponsorship. Are you kind of missing just that one big sponsor to kind of take the number thirty two team to that next level? Yeah, we feel like when we look at the the cars we race around, we're we're exceeding you know our budget and our expectations. You know that uh, the you know the front row car spin. Uh, they're they're getting brand new Roush cars and 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 A motors every week and uh, you know we have couple, we buy all their old cars that they don't want anymore then we try to go take them and beat them with it so it's fun when we when we're able to do that um, and you know I, I'd take I'd take five smaller sponsors just anything just to get you know up into that next level of of budget to get a little more tools in the toolbox we can use and. Uh, you know, but for now, we're going to take the cars we got now and the engines we got and the people and the tools, and we're going to make the most of it. What's your relationship with Mason, who kind of oversees the day-to-day -day responsibilities for the Go Fast team? And how many people are there underneath the race shop, uh, as far as, you know, underneath the roof of the race shop? How many people do you generally have working on the car on a week-to-week -week basis? Yes, yeah, so I mean, Mason, uh, you know, we're similar, similar in age. I think he's 30, 31 maybe. So, you know, we, we kind of see things in our own, you know, perspective, uh, so we can talk about things, you know, as, as maybe young young people see them. Uh, and he's passionate about, about the sport as well. He's passionate about the team, obviously. And, uh, you know, I think he does a good job managing uh, the team and, and getting the guys, uh, you know, what they need when they need it uh, and, and doing it on the shoestring budget that they have. So, I th but I think total, I think they have 16 or 17 guys. So it's a really small team. and. You know, there's there's not really a set uh, responsibilities for anybody. Everybody just kind of pitches in and does what needs to be done. So in that sense, you know, I feel like almost at home and at that team, uh, just because it's kind of what I was used to growing up with. You just pitch in and did whatever you, you had to do to get the car done and build nice stuff, and then show up to the racetrack and try to run good with it. So uh, it's I'm I'm having the time of my life in the Cup Series this year, and hopefully we can keep building on top of it. Are you actually working on cars right now? No, so they they, uh, they probably wouldn't mind if I come over there and gave them a gave them a hand or two. But uh, I've been working over at Dad's shop welding seats quite often lately. 
uh, and, and just trying to occupy my time a bit tinkering on different toys and stuff. So uh, whether it be building go-karts for Kyle Bush's kid, Brexton, I'd built a couple of go-karts for him over, over Christmas, and i am always got my hands in some sort of project. I hear you're pretty sporty with a torch. <laughs> uh, maybe a maybe a welder, a, mig, a, a TIG welder. A torch, uh, it's hard to make anything look good when you're cutting out of a torch, but uh, I, I would say that, that the torch, the blowtorch is dad's tool of preference. A, a blowtorch and a hammer can fabricate anything when you're if you just ask Randy with joy. <laughs> Knowing your dad, uh, as long as I have, I, I'm I'm not surprised by that at all. When you weren't racing full time, were you pretty much hanging out at Lajoya seating, uh, working on stuff there? Was that kind of your what you did to? I won't say just kill time because you do have to make a living. Yeah, no, that's I mean that's where I was making a living, and that's where honestly that's where I hung out at. I mean I, I've probably spent you know the one half of my life sleeping, and the other half. Uh, of my life at the joy of seating at, the, at dad's shop so uh you know that that just ended up be like the common area where everybody would just kind of gather whether it would be racing go-karts out back or you know playing video games or anything that, that was kind of like just the the place everybody congregated and met up and uh you know that's been a, a really influential place in my life and, and you know if and it's a pretty good business and a pro- good product that dad puts out of there and it, some weeks um some weeks he needs a little bit extra help so i'll pitch in and help him out I saw you at the Chili Bowl a couple of years back. You were having a pretty damn good time, like most people do. Um, saw your brother, uh, which I, I found really interesting, at, at Millbridge. And yeah. have you ever contemplated, you know, picking up a mic and, and joining our side of the of the uh, racing equation? Um, I mean, looking at all the, the drivers that are doing it, like Kevin Harvick and Joey in the booth, doing this i feel like i could I, i'd do a pretty good job uh with whether it be the podcast that we do at mrn called sunday money i have a good time with that but uh casey my brother does stuff with bob donor and speed 15 oh they're wrecking they do some stuff with uh speed uh super late models and he broadcasts that and does a good job so uh up until now you know if, if fox or fs1 called me and asked me to do a race i certainly would do it but i'd like to uh i'd like to get a little bit more credentials on the racetrack and kind of make make my way on the competition side first and then can kind of stem out and do some other things how did your brother get into that side of it because there always seems to be one brother who ends up racing and at least makes a go of it and the other brother kind of has to make his way doing something else but you and i we both love dirt racing so um i guess your brother kind of has the best of both worlds yeah he, he gets to see a whole lot more racing than i do but uh, I, th- I think the ultimate reason was by the time that he started racing, I already had used up the old man's budget on what he spent on his kid's racing career. So I, uh, I don't think he, I don't think I gave much of a chance. He, he always got like my hand-me-down cars when I moved up to a bigger car or something. Uh, so he, he kind of got the short end of the stick. I also don't think that he was, you know, I don't think he really had a, a huge passion for it. Uh, he loves racing, but I don't think he loved, loved so much the, the pressure of the driving side. Uh, but now he's working for Colleague Motorsports. Uh, do, he's a videographer. So he does, he's, got all, he's got his hands on all sorts of stuff. So I, I've got the competition side uh, of the LaJoy name taken care of, and he's, uh, you know, he's working to do all the media stuff on the other side. Who were your peers growing up around Charlotte? Your dad you know, clearly was a, a Bush Series champion, but – um multi-time and um but I, I can imagine that you and your buddies growing up in that kind of environment must have been a blast because your dad's just so much fun to be around and I can only imagine what kind of hell you guys raised growing up when you were getting your feet wet in race yeah so he had a uh he had a, we had a little dirt track he cut in behind dad's shop uh I got, a, I got a picture on my phone I saw the other day. So I run on that thing from when I was like four until probably, oh, well, he just tore it up a couple months ago. Uh, that was a, it was like somebody tearing up the field of dreams or the sand lot, you know, it's all of us buddies had a, you know, had a, a cr- good cry over it, the fairgrounds getting torn up. But, um, 
you know, just to have the opportunity to race against when I was a kid racing against Timmy Fidua and, you know, Kevin Harvick and so, all these guys that were dad's friends that came over and raced go-karts. You know, I was just a little kid and these, those guys were showing me the ropes and, and beat me up and, and smashing the doors off my little, little go-kart. So that's kind of where I cut my teeth was racing against older guys, uh, you know, until I was probably 12 or 13, I started racing against kid bone age. And who who are your peers today? I mean, who are the guys that I, that came up with you when you really got serious about racing? Yeah, so, uh, you know, me and Joey have been friends for a long time. Uh, I was in his wedding. I think we've been, we have we were friends ever since he first moved uh, to North Carolina from, from Georgia. Uh, so we still we still uh, talk quite a bit. And Would that be the champion, Joey Logano? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sliced bread. Um, <laughs> that your father's responsible for that, is he uh, not? I'm responsible for that, and he takes credit for it. So. Well, okay, so I want to hear the rest of this story because you could have doomed your buddy before he even got started because he took such a rash of shit from people when he did not evolve into the best thing since sliced bread. Well, it, it took a little bit longer for him to bake, but uh, it, I think we all realized that. You know he, he's a super talented kid and in the right opportunity. It's it's just like anything. You got to be around the right people and the right equipment and uh, to to really showcase what you can do. And he's living up to the sliced bread name now. How did that come about? I mean, how how what made uh, you come up with that? You know, he was on every magazine and on every billboard at the racetrack. You know, and everybody was talking about him. And he was you know going to be the next big phenom. And you know, so I just started, I called him up one day. I said, Hey man, you're the next best thing since sliced bread. And you know, he shared a laugh and. So I'd, every time he called me up, I'm like, "Yo, sliced bread," and it was, it was then. Then Dad picked up on it, and then he uh, then he started taking credit for it. So I'm not gonna let him take credit for that. So Randy didn't have Tom Logano's budget to get you a ride that early and often. Uh, yeah, I mean, we were. It was just two different hands. You know, it's two different hands of cards that we were dealt. You know, it's uh, he he was raised a certain way and, and had a lot of he had good people to work for work for him and and you know and, and had had good cars to drive where dad was kind of the opposite where he wasn't given you know that when he was growing up so he didn't think I needed that growing up either but uh, it's it's old it's crazy how much different that you know our, our upbringing through racing has been and we ultimately have met the same spot I'll, obviously I'm not at the level that Joey is just yet but uh, that's why it's taken a that's why it's taken several more years to get uh, to the position that I ultimately want to be in just because I wasn't able to align myself in something good earlier in my career to really show people, uh, you know, what I was capable of. But I think in turn, on the flip side of that, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Uh, you know, my, I wasn't mature enough to understand and appreciate the opportunities if something would have came to me earlier in my career. So it's all come full circle. And you know, I feel like I, everything I've learned now, I've learned it for a reason. And in the timetable, it's taken me to learn a lot of things in this sport because it's not easy to learn, you know, some of the nuances of, of driving every week and all these tracks that, you know, are, it's just it's just hard. Uh, you know, cup, cup racing is really hard. And I've learned a lot over the last three years. So uh, I, I'm just learning one little nugget every week and just trying to keep applying that to the to the notebook. Did you also race with uh, – t- uh, I'm sorry um... – Daniel Hemrick and, and Bubba growing up. Yeah, so me and Bubba went to high school together. So I used to pick him up and drive him to school every day and drop him off. Uh, so we raced. Bubba was like a – he was – I don't know if we really raced side by side a whole lot because I was maybe a year or two older than he was. And then me and me and uh, Bubba – or me and Daniel raced a lot of Bandoleros. And then he ran some Legends cars that I didn't – I didn't spend a whole lot of time in Legends cars. And then – we actually didn't. Beyond that, he kind of went like the super late mile route, and I went the late. I went the went the late mile stock route. So we never really raced each other. And then uh, it, it's pretty cool. We joke about it. You know, we, me, Bubba, and, and Daniel all grew up six minutes away from each other. And now we're beating each other's doors off on Sundays. So that's pretty cool. Do you guys still remain friends? Yeah, yeah. So we were hanging out the the big one on the boulevard last night, and uh, you know, just th- those guys are a good time. And you know. My buddy Brandon McReynolds, uh, he raced in the Arca race yesterday. He's still trying to, still trying to dig and claw. And he, he's driver coaching Noah Gregson, but he just hasn't really got a good shot in a in a national series car. I think he's capable of doing it. It's just, you know, it, it just didn't shake out, uh, you know, in his favor and some of the, some of the things. So, uh, you know, there's lots of guys that are capable to drive in in the highest level if they have, they're in the right opportunity. It's just funny how it sometimes shakes out. 
He's a great kid, too, and uh, he's a good spotter. He's also good behind the, the microphone. We'd love to see Brandon get a get a shot, but there's only, you know, so many seats. And, you know, earlier you mentioned Joey and the whole sliced bread thing. And all kidding aside, you know, William Byron is in a kind of a similar situation right now where he probably didn't race against a lot of grown-ass men like, you know, short track guys do on their way here. And um, I think somebody like Joey could really be <laughs> a great influence, you know, patience grasshopper, because if you stay with it long enough and you do have the talent, you can persevere. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And, you know, it's just, uh, you just, I think you get moved up so quick and you're in, you're in cars that are far more capable than the other people or other teams you're racing against, whether it be in, in late mile stocks or k n or arca or trucks even in xfinity you know the the gap in equipment from a good one to a bad one is is much more you know because there's only three or four good cars in xfinity nowadays and there's probably only one or two trucks that are capable of winning and if you get in those guys if you get in those cars then you just look like a hero no matter where your talent level is compared to some others so uh it's hard to really gauge talent anymore based on you know handicapping of the equipment um, so it, it really is hard to gauge what somebody's talent level is nowadays until you get to the cup series and you know where your teammates stack up and, you know, cause I think all the guys in the cup series can, can drive their cars to the maximum capability of the, the tires and the aero grip and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, it, it's gonna, it's, it's hard. Like I said, it's, you know, Will Byron jumped into the, the, the jump from Xfinity cup is way bigger than people think. And. You know, I, I compare Xfinity race into a swimming pool, right? You can have a good day and, and be a little bit off, and have a have a decent day in Xfinity. If you're a little bit off in Cup, man, you're just, you're in the way. So um, it, it's kind of like trying to swim in the ocean versus the pool. You know, it's not the same thing. So uh, I I I'm confident that guys like Daniel and, and William are going to figure out how to swim in the ocean. Uh, and I'm lucky enough. I can I'm I'm just treading water, and I'm learning. I, I didn't know how to swim. Uh, I didn't know how to swim in, in, in this deep ocean here for the first couple of years, and I think I'm starting to figure it out. I guess at the end of the day, the the goal is not to be called a squirrel by your, yeah. your competitors. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't want to be labeled as that guy. So it's I mean, but a lot of the guys that that call the guys in the sm- in the slower cars squirrels or in the way or flick them off when they're lapping them, they've never been in those situations, and now know how bad the cars are driving or how how hard it is to get out of the way. You know, they they. But then you got guys like Clint Boyer that was in those situations, and he talked about how how bad it sucked. Well, let me tell you, pal, you're making you were making about I don't know infinitely more money than you were doing when you were over at H Scott, and you had Hendrick cars and Hendrick motors, and you were still in the way. So you had all the tools, and you still were running in the back. So that just goes to show you can have all the tools, you can have all the people, and if it's just not the right if it's not the right situation, you're not going to run good. So. You know, it, it, the guy, a guy like that with that attitude wouldn't wouldn't last it three weeks in the position that I've been in for the last three years, with the small, you know, just a small town, ta- small team. I, and I, I don't want to keep beating that small team narrative up because you know it gets old after a while. Uh, you know, because it is us against them. But you know, it, it really is a different style of racing than you're going out there, you know, knowing you got a shot to win. So it's just it, it's just different. So a guy like that that you know. They, they wouldn't last three weeks in, in a situation like I've been in the last couple of years. So that I'm, but on the, on, on the other side of that, I appreciate, I'm going to appreciate the, the good ones when it comes. Corey LaJoy will be happy at the end of the year if? Um, if we can just keep learning something every week and keep cleaning up the rough edges that, you know, on, on the driving side of myself and then just, uh, you know, whether we have parts failures or anything, stuff that we can control. Uh, there's some things obviously we can't control, but if we can, check the boxes and and you know i get better as a driver the team gets better as a team with building a little more speed in their cars and i think you know there's not really a number in points per se because you know you kind of finish in points when you're outside when you're outside the chase you finish in the points kind of where your budget stacks up just like f1 so you know if we can finish ahead of a front row car great uh but you know we'll just try to do the best we can each and every week and if, sometimes that'll be 25th sometimes that'll be a little bit better if we get some wrecks. So that's the goal. 
final question who's the most famous driver to flip you off uh they, they've all done it once or twice so <laughs> Uh, maybe junior. I think junior might have flipped me off when I was driving that BK car. Um, I was I was the last car junior passed on the racetrack at Homestead, so uh, I, I let him go so I can have that little trivia nugget. But uh, he he passed me off of four, Alpha Turn Four at Homestead, so uh, I was several laps down at that point in the race. He was not, but um, yeah, pro- I'm sure juniors. I'm sure juniors flipped me off, or Martin Truex flips me off quite a bit. It's just, you know, same same band of characters. <laughs> Kurt Busch will never admit, as long as I know him as well as I know him, he will never admit to me that Dale Earnhardt flipped him out, off in his debut in the Daytona 500. And and one of these days, I will get him drunk enough to, to acknowledge that that happened. Hey, I really appreciate you coming in, Corey, and uh, look forward to uh, what you can do with Go Fast Racing this year. Thanks for having me on.